done Finding Nemo. Um, we chose this topic because we both are obviously kind of big fans of the movie, and I did think the movies a lot. And then another reason was we both probably aren't the biggest fans in that, so we wanted to do something really fun and interesting and something like our audience would be really engaged in and have fun with and stay interested. So also there's like a lot of calculus we could incorporate it and kind of make it fun to like learn, I guess, and review. So there's various examples in there, so that was fun. Um, a little bit about the movie. It's about uh, Fish Marlin, who's in search of his son Nemo. Nemo is taken um, by a diver when he swam close to the ocean surface. So Marlin swam around the ocean looking for Nemo and he met a friend named Dory and they met uh, different sea creatures along the way and then they found Nemo in a dentist fish aquarium located in Mississippi Harbor. So just to make it a little more fun, we put in a little clip of oh, the trailer. Oh, you wanted uh, volume, right? Yeah. And we have fruit snacks, so you guys can enjoy those. <laughs>
like in the movie, Marlon's very protective over his son Nemo, which is a lot like him with his son. So it's just coming from his personal life. Um, Archimedes was one of the creators of calculus. So he was a famous Greek inventor and known as one of the greatest mathematicians of all time. He had a great interest in solving problems, so that's where he got his ideas of calculus from. And he's known for finding the similarities between the surface and volume of a sphere. And he found the general formulas for that. And he discovered the approximation of pi. And he would draw uh, geometric objects on his stomach with all vital. And then he was later killed by a Roman soldier that didn't know who he was. So a little history behind the cross sections is a definition of a cross section is a surface or shape that would be exposed by making straight cut through the middle of something as, or not the middle, but a straight cut through something, especially with right angles to an axis. And then we did different ways of finding a model. So that would be cross section, distal washers, or shell method. And in our case, for our problem, we used this cross section, and we're going to find the, the volume of the pelican's bill. So you'll see that later. Um, and then continued, we're just going to review the steps that Kruger taught us for finding a cross section. So first you draw your area of your region using your functions to see what shape it makes. And then we find the height, which would be labeled a pass in it. And then in terms of S, you're going to define your cross section, write your area in terms of like how it is like perpendicular to the axis, and then you're going to integrate your area to find, solve your problem. And then we just have a little picture of different examples. Um, this is theory of integration. Inter integration is a branch in mathematics concerned with determination, properties, and application of integrals. Um, integration is created to find an area underneath a curve. And an Italian mathematician, Paolo Vahari, discovered the integral in 1635. Um, so in our calculus, what we did was we decided that one of the characters in the movie, the pelican that saves the fish or whatever and brings them to the office or whatever, he carries the fish in his mouth with the water and we decided to find the volume of the bill. So our first step is we kind of had to find out what kind of pelican he is to find the dimension. So they live in Australia, so it's an Australian pelican. And then we found the average length, which was about 17.717 inches. And then when we found it, we had to convert it from centimeters to inches. So that was our length. And then here are some of the pictures that, because we pre-handed the drawing after we found the dimensions. So this is just kind of gives you like an overall shape from like the different angles. We use this picture a lot to see the different shapes and stuff. So we got the dimensions correct. So that's our drawing we did. After we marked the highest point, which is 17.717, we sketched in the like what the shape of the bell would be. So our width was eight, like eight centimeters. And then along the line we drew for the curve, we plotted points so we could put it into our calculator to find equations. So then next on the graphing calculator, we had different sections of points. So like in this picture, you can see that we had different types of functions. Like for the first one, we used it quadratic, so we had to figure out what best like type of function would be for each equation. So we did like these points, and then this one, and then so on. So we had four different equations. Yep. And we only did one side because they're symmetrical, so they'd be equal. So we just at the end times it by two. But so the first one, we had to use trial and error to find like all these equations. So the first one we found out that the quadratic equation fit best, and then line two and three we used cubic, and then line four we used the natural log. And then after finding the most accurate ones, we found these equations, and then we had to see from what y values they'd be from. And some of these, what, x values, yeah. And then, um, so when we go back, you can see that some of the numbers are repeated from two to two point nine and then 2.6 to 2.9 because it actually goes back on the x values here. So we go back. So a so little explanation for that. Um, after we found our equations, we plugged it into our graphing calculator to make sure they were accurate. So that's what we got for 
our piecewise function. And it took us a little bit of time to figure out how to plug piecewise graphs in that we figured out. And then we use volume by cross sections of squares to find the volume of the bill. So we integrated from zero to two for the first one, and then we use like a change for every one since our equations are different. Mm -hmm. So step seven is we had to find the sum of all four of those equations after we integrated them. And then once we, after that, we had to multiply um, the sum of from step seven by two because the graph is symmetrical, therefore it would be equal on the same side for our volume. So then for the first one, we got 152.112 inches cubed. The second line, we got 160.0. 065 inches cubed, 73.798 inches cubed for the next one, and then last, 19.817 inches cubed. And after that, once we um, add them all together, we got 405.792 inches cubed. And then once we multiplied it by two, because of the symmetry, we got 811.584 inches cubed. For our equations, we uh, squared them because in cross sections, that s would have been squared because that's for squares. Yep. So that's what we squared our equations. And then some other ways you can apply cross sections in real life are for construction or pools, find the volume of water. For engineering, are used in geography and exploration and finding the volume of buildings. Yeah, so anything you kind of need to find the volume for for your 